Hello, my name is Michael McCann. I'm a fourth year music education student at the University of Oregon, and today we'll be going through the OMEA and NAFME All State, All Northwest audition material on Euphonium. I'll play the excerpts so you get an idea on how they sound, and we'll talk about a few tips to help with your preparation for the upcoming audition this fall. Let's get started with the chromatic scale. <laughs> Some tips for the chromatic scale. Tip number one, practice maintaining a consistent tone across the entire range of the instrument. Starting on middle F, or G if you're reading Euphonium TC, practice going up one half step and down one half step, copying the same great tone color and quality you have on middle F to each subsequent note. Do this in long tones. This will take a while, but Diligent practice on this, expanding up the range and down the range from the middle will ensure you have a great tone across the entire range of the instrument. Tip number two, practice maintaining consistent time. Just as consistent tone is important, so too is consistent time. Some players may have the tendency to rush or drag certain complicated sections of the chromatic scale. Start slow. I'm talking quarter note equals 56 or slower and practice it very slow, working up the sections as you improve in tempo. This leads directly into point number three. Chunk your practice into octaves. Start with the lower octave, low F to middle F, or G to G if you're on TC, and practice maintaining that consistent tone and time, with a metronome, um, practice maintaining consistent tone and time in that one octave. Once you feel you have a great sense of tone and great sense of time, then expand it another octave, and then expand it the last half octave for the full range of the written chromatic scale for this excerpt. By chunking your practice into octaves, you'll be able to develop fundamentals in the lower part of your register that will make your upper register sing. And finally, number four, consider your phrases. Just because this is a chromatic scale doesn't mean we shouldn't treat it as music. With that, consider where you want your phrase to go. Where do you feel the line going? Consider where you're going to breathe because there's no breath marks indicated on the written music. Consider the articulations you're going to use. Now, typically for an audition like this, you're going to want legato tonguing or uh, smooth connected over the entire scale. But these are things that you can consider in your own practice as well as for the audition. Talk with your band director or your private teacher, if you have one, about ways you can play the chromatic scale and ways you could practice it as well. But these are a few baseline tips. <laughs> Some tips for the Arbins. Number one, practice with a metronome. I cannot stress this enough. Start the metronome slow, and I mean slow, like I said with the chromatic scale. Quarter note equals 60 if you can manage it, and then work your way up from there, playing at a consistent tempo the whole time. I'm in my fourth year of college, and this excerpt is still kicking my butt. Start slow. Tip number two, isolate the, isolate the excerpt into two measure chunks. Isolating into two measure chunks will allow you to focus on perfecting each little bit before putting it back together, rather than trying to approach the entire exercise as one big chunk. You'll just get stuck looping the same sections over and over again, and eventually the latter half of the piece won't be as good as the beginning half of the piece. Chunking it in two measure phrases allows you to put equal attention on every part and then putting it back together. Tip number three, consider your phrases. Like with the chromatic scale, where do you see the line going? There are some written crescendos and decrescendos that we have to observe, but where else do you see the phrase going? Where else do you see these upward arpeggios and scalar passages? 
Number four, staccatos aren't peckish, so don't play them peckish. Dr. Wiltshire here at the U of O has a great saying, staccatos aren't short, they're separated. Each note needs to have a rich, full, resonant tone while still being separated from the next one, allowing the instrument to sing. Tip number five, and you're going to hear this later with the Telemann, um, sing, buzz, play, in that order. Sing through the excerpt. Yes, it might be a little bit awkward. Do it in a room or in a practice room at your school in front of a mirror, but sing your heart out with this excerpt. Then buzz the excerpt on your mouthpiece. And then finally, after you do that, play it again in those two measure chunks. You'll notice the tone and your musicality increase exponentially. And tip number six, which you're gonna hear for the next two excerpts, record yourself. Recording yourself is so important right from day one all the way up to when you record for the audition because you can hear your growth that you've made over time as well as isolate what you need to work on. You are your own best teacher. Here are some strategies as you approach the Galliard, track three. Tip number one, find a professional recording of a bassoonist playing this. Because this wasn't written originally for euphonium, and there are some things that a bassoonist would do differently than, let's say, a trumpet player or a euphonium player. In your practice, try mimicking the bassoon as much as possible. By accessing these different ways of being musical, especially on a bassoon or on different instruments, we can take those techniques and apply them to the euphonium, unlocking a wide color palette and musical palette at our disposal. That will definitely separate you from other candidates auditioning. This might be the hardest excerpt. You know, the Arbenz has a lot of notes and it's technically hard, but this is slow music, and slow music is infinitely harder than fast music. With slow music, we have to consider our phrases much more greatly because there we have to plan our breaths in here. Now, luckily for us, eighth note equals 72, these rests that we have provide ample space for breathing, but it's how we get to those rests that is the most important. Take, for example, the long legato we have in measures three and four. How would you phrase that outside of the growth, uh, outside of the crescendo and the decrescendo that we have written? Take, for example, the long legato we have in measures five and six. That's only marked mezzo forte. Is there more music you can take out of that than what's written?
Here are some strategies as you approach the Telamon. This one is a lot of fun and has a lot of character in it. The temple marking, Spiritoso e Staccato a Tempo Moderato, tells you everything you need to know about this excerpt. Play it with spirit and with vigor. And remember, staccatos aren't short, but separated, so everything should feel light and bouncy throughout this entire excerpt. Like before, consider where your phrases go. The first few measures are only marked mezzo forte, but there's a lot of dynamic contrast we can do and what you heard me do in my performance of the excerpt. Consider the dynamic drop to piano at measure eight, or measure seven, sorry. How can you emphasize that piano more than with the mezzo forte? Do, do the staccatos need to pop more? Do they need to pop less? As you answer all of these questions and work with your band director and private teacher if you have one, you'll have great musical ideas that you can communicate. From there, it's a matter of singing, buzzing, and playing like we did before with the other excerpts. You might also try half valving with this one. That's where you take all the valves on your euphonium, put them halfway down, and if you have a compensating valve on this side, you press that down as well and blow through the excerpt. By doing this, along with singing, buzzing, and playing, and also listening to a professional recording, you'll have a much greater idea as you approach playing this. And like I said with the other excerpt, record yourself. Start today. Start the very first day you practice these excerpts and record yourself every day you practice up until the day you have to record for the audition. Not only will you notice your growth, but you'll know exactly what you want to focus on and know what decisions you want to make. Additionally, practice in front of your friends, practice in front of your band director, practice in front of your parents, get in front of as many people as possible. That way on recording day, it's just another performance of the excerpt that you've been performing for so long. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I wish you nothing but success as you prepare for the Allstate and All Northwest auditions. One final tip before we go. When you record these excerpts with your band director or your private lesson teacher in submission for this audition, don't record the tape 50 times or 60 times and try and get that perfect one. Record it two or three times and take whatever your best attempt out of that is. The more we record, the more we sit here and dwell on everything, the more perfectionist we become and the more nitpicky we become, wanting to get that perfect audio take. When in reality, if we were playing this audition in front of a panel, we'd have one chance and we're done. Try and do that to yourself as well. Give yourself two, three max chances to record. Thank you again for watching this video and go Ducks.